prank your co-workers, confuse your parents, turn any innocent looking link into this. Check out Am I Legit today and remember, no money back, guaranteed. URL shorteners. You've probably heard of them, right? Where you take a long link and you crush it right down into something that's much easier to send to friends, post on Twitter, or quite frankly, do whatever the heck you want to do with it. Now, what happens if we take this idea and turn it upside down? What do you get? Well, I can tell you. You get Ame Legit, which instead of making links short, it transforms them into something that came from the deepest depths of the internet. I really wouldn't want to click one of these, would you? I'd recommend checking out the site, and I've left a link in the description below for you to do so. Seriously, check it out! So how does this work? Well, that's a good question, and to answer it, we need to look at how URL shorteners are actually supposed to work when they've been built correctly. For this demo, I'm going to be using a fake site. Short.link. Since this doesn't actually exist, if you try to go here, I'm really sorry, you're going to be seriously disappointed. So let's get started. We've got a nice long link here from Google Maps. And I want to make it crushed right down. So I'm going to head over to our site, pop it in, and then hit go. That's going to create a post request, which allows us to send some data to the server on the create endpoint. When that gets called, the server side is going to run a little bit of code because we want to create the short version. And to do that, we need to generate a little bit of short text. To achieve this, we can take an alphabet, which is letters and numbers. For this site, we're sampling eight random characters, but this could be any number, to create this little chappy here. Now keep an eye on that because it's going to be reused throughout the rest of the demo. Once we've got it, we associate the long link with it and save it in our database. And then we construct the URL. Notice again, this short little chappy over to our happy little user. They are then going to send the link to their friend who clicks it. Their friend's web browser makes a GET request to the resource pointed at by the short URL. This is completely normal and it's how web browsers work, but ours is going to be handled a bit differently. When the server gets a request, it first figures out that, oh hey, I've actually got something short on the end. So it pulls it out and asks the database, hey, have you got any records that match this short guy? Lo and behold, we do because we saved one earlier and allows us to then retrieve the long version that this short link corresponds to. And then we just do a little bit of magic. We can now redirect this person's request to the long version over here. We use a status code of 301 in a response. Normally this is 200 to indicate nothing wrong, everything's cool, carry on as you were. But 301 determines, hey, that link you requested is now permanently redirecting this one at the bottom. So the user's web browser can now just go, oh cool, I'm gonna now point you to this place. And we're done. So this flow is pretty much how Amalogy works, but there's one major difference. I completely subvert step number two, which is where we generate the short string, which is then used in the URL. Let's give it back to users. Here, my version, well, that uses data from various sources to create a long, malicious looking string. To get all this information together to do this, I had a look in various places. First, I found a listing of various domain names that serve malware. Next, I had a look at the structure of what file names would look like for malicious sources. And I noticed something quite interesting. A lot of them try to emulate the names of Windows system files such as this here, or that there. Into the mix, that also went. One thing I also noticed was there's quite a broad array 
or file extensions that is applied to malicious file names, such as .zip, .docx, .exe, and various others. I also took a look at what ransomware uses when it encrypts your files, using something like .wncy for WannaCry. Now that all this data is together, I was able to start figuring out a deterministic way of creating malicious looking links. I started with a domain name, I created three of these to get a bit of variety in the links. Once one of those is chosen, my algorithm then looks at directory listing. A number of subdirectories, denoted by the slash, all filled with either randomly generated hex strings, so A to F, 1 to 9, as well as a directory name, such as .wellknown, which really shouldn't be actually made public, but in some insecure configurations, is. Then, the final step, the file name. I have a list of various malicious looking file names, as well as a list of malicious looking suffixes. One from each list is then chosen, combined together, and then you get your full link. And that is the magic. So that you can see how this all works in action, I've included a link to the source code on GitHub in the description below. Feel free to check it out. It's built using the serverless framework, so you should be able to run it on any cloud provider such as AWS, Google Cloud, or even Azure. And it should also be able to be ran locally if you don't want to pay anything. Of course, who does? Feel free to ask me any questions on how it works. There's also a readme in the repository, so you should be able to check that out as well. Pretty bare bones. There's enough to actually get an understanding of what's going on here. That's all for today. Make sure to subscribe, or maybe follow me on Twitter. I won't judge you if you don't. And I'll see you in the next one. Till then.